Hey, just want to give you an update on my strap project I've got going, the Relict Black Strap Project. Going to be finishing it in nitrocellulose. This has probably been the hardest part thus far, and that is taping up the guitar. And so I'll talk a little bit about that. I did not really take any video of me doing it because I didn't really think it'd be that beneficial. Plus, it would just take up a huge amount of time, and I had to just speed through it all. For, and you really wouldn't get much out of it. So I'm just going to kind of talk about the things I learned doing it. So if you want to do something like this, uh, maybe that'll help you. So obviously I, I finished the body. I did the um, tea and the steel wool and vinegar solution. So I'm putting a, I put up a video of that. So if you haven't checked that out, do that. Click on the uh, info button up top and it should take you to that or in the links, links below. Yeah, the, the body was alder. The body is alder. I don't have any exposed cavities to show you the uh, original color. But uh, needless to say, it's, it's much more weathered and gray than it, than it originally was. So uh, also, I always question really how the best way to hang this, hang a guitar body while spraying it. Now this is pretty makeshift and not the greatest hook. I did it out of a coat hanger. For whatever reason, this hole was actually already in this stake that I had. So I just put it through there, but it's pretty substantial. I think it's going to hold it just fine. You know, and this is just a stake for like you know, laying concrete or something on the ground or pouring holes, putting up a fence, you can get them at Home Depot, but whatever piece of wood laying around that you have. And then I actually use some pretty long, maybe two and a half inch nail or uh, screws, but I always kind of question like, if you put screws in the back, then you're gonna have unfinished holes in the areas where the screw is. Now, you will note that I am, I covered up the area where the, the neck plate is gonna go. And I just, somebody said at one point, you know, you just get more transfer and more better tone. And I was like, I don't really know. And I still don't really think that's necessarily the case. But I thought, well, I'm taping it up. Why not? You know, it's not going to hurt. So it'll be like metal to wood contact in the back. And also, I won't have any kind of weird circles left over to where the neck plate doesn't like um, make full contact because there's like a little lip sticking up. And I didn't really want to sand down around the finish right there so this is the method I, that I came up with and then I also obviously taped off the neck pocket because I don't want paint getting down in there and making it uh, to where the neck will fit in the pocket and then other uh, other than that I had a couple of pictures a couple of pictures online of strats that I kind of liked and so I took kind of pieces of those different ones that I liked and just kind of got I kind of followed the ideas of those not exactly I didn't print out anything. I didn't use contact paper or anything like that, which is obviously a, a method and um, some of the more professional folks uh, choose to do that. But what I did, what I ended up doing, well, before I jump into that, you're gonna notice that the most of the area of where the pick is gonna go is covered up. I just thought the less paint, the less, the less um, clear coat on this, the better. And I really, again, want it to be pretty lightweight. So I thought, you know, this is all going to be covered up by the pick art anyway, so I'm just going to leave it uncovered. And I will go back in and shield the cavities, and I'm probably going to do that with aluminum foil, of all things. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I even did the, uh, the input jack here, that cavity, and then on the back, I even taped up the, the spring claw cavity. So, and then I definitely taped up this down in here where the, uh, the trim block goes because um, if and when it does make contact with the body, I want it to be full contact and not covered up by um, any kind of paint. So that's that. The other obvious piece would be the tape that looks relict. So anywhere you see blue tape, obviously is gonna wear, be where uh, when I pull it off, you're gonna see exposed wood. So again, if, if I haven't said, or if you, if you don't know yet, my plan is to paint this black and it's going to be kind of sort of like John Mayer's black guitar. Just that basic idea, not, not nearly as relics. So what it did, again, I had some kind of, kind of rough templates to go by and I started off trying to use blue painter's tape and I was, I was kind of curious as to whether when I pulled the tape off, it would kind of pull some of that stain off with it or pull, you know, just pull pieces of wood off, not pieces, but just fine uh, layers of wood. And so I, I put a couple of pieces of tape down in inconspicuous spots and then put it on there for a few days and then took it back off and it didn't really seem to, to take anything off. 
It did like faintly take off some stuff, but not much at all. So I'm gonna use this paint, uh, this painter's tape, and I know it's only good for like 14 days, so I wanna try to get all my um, painting and uh, clear coating done in that amount of time. Anyway, so I started off by just like pulling off some tape and then trying to like cut shapes with it and then put it on the guitar, but that was, that just was a fail. So uh, that would be my, one of my um, suggestions or pieces of advice is not to do that. And so what I ended up doing, I saw some people do this and it seemed to work out really well. I took, uh, so like areas that I wanted to be taped, I kind of took like strips and just put them, like let's take this corner for example. I just took, took a couple of strips to cover up like a basic, you know, rectangular shape of where it was going to go. And then I took my trusty pencil here and uh, I would kind of get probably the finest tip as possible just to do something like this. But I, I essentially drew the outline of what I wanted it to look like. And that way, you know, if you mess up, you can kind of erase it or go back and just kind of remember what you really want to cut out. And then I took a trusty old razor blade and I went and I just cut out the shapes, right? And I was thinking to myself, well, it's gonna like make kind of like gashes in the guitar, the wood the, of the body but it really didn't. It kind of just cut through the tape and it, if you do something like this, you'll kind of get the feel of it as you go over time. And as you do more, you'll get a better feel of it. But it really just kind of cut through the tape and uh, once you do that, you kind of peel it off and you know, depending on how, how well you cut it, it doesn't always peel the best. But for the most part, it went really well and the more I did it, the better I got at it. I'll try to put up a couple of pictures of the guitars that I use as uh, rough templates. show you the back here so the idea is you know the the, uh, the back um, spring cover will go something like that I actually do have the, uh, the back cover that I got from Stumac in mint green it's gonna go right there ish you know all this is gonna be wood that you see that's in blue I wanted to update you with the progress so far before I do any kind of painting and so what I'm gonna do is to kind of follow the Stumac method of finishing. I'm going to do a uh, sand and sealer and then uh, take maybe some 320 grit after each one and kind of lightly sand over it and then I'll do maybe two or three coats of that I guess and then we'll do the clear the, uh, the black nitrocellulose on that. Little of coats as possible probably two to three and then finish it up with the, uh, the clear coat the nitrocellulose clear and we'll do I don't know how many coats I'm gonna to try to do as little as possible, but I've never done anything like this before, so I wanna make sure that I get good coverage. But the idea is, I think, maybe eight to 10 total coats when, when all is said and done. And then one last thing is, while I'm thinking about it here, when I put the pickguard on, I wanted it to make full contact, and I'm gonna bring up the aluminum foil and the cavities up over the body and bring it to some of the screws on the pickguard to where it makes contact. So the idea is the Faraday cage, so it kind of blocks out any kind of interference. So the pig guard, hopefully, will be fully shielded on the back. If not, I'll have to redo that because I plan on ordering one that's that's fully loaded. I'm going to bring the, the aluminum foil over, but I wanted the pig guard to make really good full contact on the body. So I tried to leave pretty good sort of lip around all these areas where the pig guard, so it can actually sit and seat well even though there will probably be like a little valley where the color and the clear coat stop and then all this will be bare wood so it just is little of a, a coverage of paint and, and clear coat and stuff on the body as possible. So that's that for now. Stay tuned as I uh, keep continue work on this and I'll try to keep you up to date.
update on where I'm at in the finishing process. So right now I've got one coat of clear coat on the guitar. And, um, and by that I mean, I actually put, first of all, as far as the clear, I put like a tack coat on, as they say, as Stuart McDonald says. So what that does is just a fine mist to kind of like prep it for clear. And then I did a pretty uh, thick or wet coat on top of that. And it's been drying overnight. I'm not necessarily gonna let it dry, you know, that many hours before I keep putting on clear. But that's where it's at right, right now. Uh, you probably will notice it's got some like scuffs all over it. What I did was just go with, with some 400 grit paper and the 400 grit dry. Just with the research I did, that kind of seems to be an okay thing to do. I just kind of scuffed out any dust marks or any little bitty air bubbles. I didn't get rid of really bad air bubbles, but I did get some and I wanted to get those out because it seems like those are the kind of thing that will not go away. Whereas you can kind of get rid of the dust spots a little easier. So that's where I'm at now. What I did uh, up to this point, I put the sanding sealer on. I did probably four coats, maybe more like three. The first couple of coats I did, I was really conservative and it was really light and it really wasn't even wet when I put it on. So I don't know if I'd even count those coats, but I did put those on. And then uh, a little word of advice or lesson learned as far as putting on the tape first. Once you do that, it's a little difficult to sand because uh, as you go along the edges of the tape, you're likely to, to sand to pull those up, the edges up. So it's not the easiest thing. What I've done, what I found to be fairly simple is to take um, just a, like a nine volt battery, anything that is of this shape and size and is flat and uh, just take a little square piece of whatever grit paper you need and uh, kind of just hold that securely to the the battery and that way you can get in like little small spots and I could kind of like work my way around the, the, the tape so I wouldn't pull it up but yeah so I did about three four coats of sanding sealer and then I did uh, 320 grit to and I realized once I did that that there's actually a lot of places especially like along the edges that I should have sanded a little better with the 220 uh, they just weren't they were a little rough uh, rougher than I like so I probably probably took away uh, quite a bit of the sanding sealer just roughing those spots down but that was before maybe the the final two coats so I think there's enough of that on there yeah so then I did the color I used basically an entire can of the black uh, nitrocellulose color I used pretty much an entire can of that on the guitar which was about four sort of wet coats and um, I really wanted to to get so the thing I didn't understand, I still understand, is whether or not you'll be able to see the wood grain. You know, most of the uh, finishes you see on like a black strat, you, you don't see the wood grain. Not that that's bad, but I wanted it to look sort of authentic. And so I put, I tried to put as much color on there as I could to kind of cover that up. I know Stuart McDonald said just put on enough color to cover up the wood itself, you know, to just make a good uh, even coverage of color, but I wasn't sure, so I did quite a bit of coloring. And I'm gonna put the, the clear coats on. So where I'm at now is I'm, I'm about at the six or seven coats total with the sanding, sealer, and the color. So now I've gotta do about six, maybe maybe seven, I don't know. They say that if it's your first time to go pretty heavy on the clear. So I'll do at least six coats of clear on top of all this. And then uh, lucky for me, I don't have to get it exactly, you know, spick and span, clear, polished, you know. I don't have to get it looking brand new because it's gonna be relic. So I probably won't do all the wet sealing, uh, wet sanding and glossing and everything that you would do on a final uh, polished guitar. So that's good for me because I'd probably screw it up. It sounds like a pretty uh, intricate thing, a pretty detailed thing, and one of those things where you actually, uh, experience comes in handy. So I don't have a lot of experience there and I might not have the patience to do it. But I am trying to be as patient as I can and do the right thing with all these coats. Let it dry in enough time. So yeah, that's where we're at. Um, I've got about five or so more clear coats to go. And then I will, you know, scuff out any kind of orange peel or anything like that. I'm not necessarily going for a super glossy look in the end. And then one other thing I'm just kind of curious about is how the ridges are going to be with the, same, with the, uh, the tape. You know, I don't know if it's going to be like a cliff where all the, the color and the clear meet the body of the, the wood where the tape is. I know it's not going to be that thick, but I'm just kind of curious to how those edges are going to be and how I'm going to 
make that transition. And then I plan on going over, when I do take the tape off and everything's dry, I'm going to put some like true oil on the wooden parts to, to protect them. And yeah, so that's where I'm at now. And I'm just trying to keep you guys up to date, up to speed, any kind of things I learn that might be helpful. I'm trying to teach those, share those. Not that I'm an expert at this by any means, just trying to share uh, anything that I've learned and help anybody out who wants to do something like this. Thanks for watching and I'll try to keep you updated still. Thanks, bye.